Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the Pollock 7-way in-bed wiring for gooseneck and fifth wheels on a 2015 Chevy Silverado 3500. When attaching your fifth wheel or your gooseneck trailer, you do need to plug it into your 7-way just so you get your lights as well as your brakes. But a lot of times you're having to drape that wire over the tailgate, so having this in the bed keeps it nice and protected and clean, uh, easy easily able to plug in as well and maintain all your factory functions. Now it just ties into your factory connector so you're going to maintain all your factory seven-way functions on your factory plug as well as in your bed. So with that being said it's simply plug and play to that factory seven-way. Now this is a great addition when adding a fifth wheel to your truck because chances are you're going to be plugging it in. So might as well have your plug ready to go. It's also super easy to install. Now this one doesn't come with the mounting hardware so you might grab some self-tapping screws as well as some zip ties to get it all uh, nice and clean uh, and mounted up properly. But other than that, super easy. I'm going to walk you through the install so you can get yours installed. To begin our installation, first we need to figure out where we want to mount our plug. And generally in this flat area seems to be the best spot that a lot of people install it. So I'm going to put it right about here. So I'll go ahead and take a drill bit and just make a small pilot hole. Now, I also recommend having a short drill bit. You don't want anything long because if you drill through and poke, you can put a dimple on the outside of your bed. So now I'm going to use a hole saw. I'm using a two and a quarter inch bit. That should make it large enough for us to be able to get this uh, or our cords pass through. So just take your time here. Now if you have a uh, spray and bed liner, sometimes it can fight you a little bit. So just take your time here. Now with that pop through, we do have some rough edges. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and run a file around that just to kind of take some of that off. Because this is exposed metal, we want to make sure that it's protected. So you can use spray paint. I'm just going to use a paint marker uh, and just kind of coat that raw metal edge just to prevent any rust from happening long term. Now we're going to pass down the double uh, plug portion to the bottom side of the truck. Now it might get a little tight here, so just kind of be patient and make sure that you're not rubbing those wires against the raw edge. So now we need to make our connections to our plug and these snap in. Now I will say if you snap them in, uh, make sure it's in the correct spot because to get these undone is really tricky. So it's best to do it right the first time. And I'm gonna be using kind of the layout that they have here on the plug panel um, or the cover. That way I can know exactly where it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and get mine snapped into place and then I'll show you where they all go. Now in pushing these in, you are gonna hear Kind of an audible snap and you should be able to give it a quick tug make sure that it's locked into place they slide in pretty easily so just make sure that you have those um, in the proper spot now as far as getting these laid out it can be a little bit tricky um, but what you might want to do if you need a reference is you can actually copy off the plugs that are down here um, normal wire colors uh, as far as other wire harnesses that i've done they kind of go a little bit, uh, they're more standard. These are a little bit different, but again, just follow this. Make sure that the colors correspond and you should be good to go. And once you kind of double check your wires and all those colors correspond with your other plug, we're going to go ahead. There's this keeper here that just kind of snaps them all into place. And it can really only go in one way, so it slides over. There's a little notch there. Just press this in. And then we're about ready to uh, attach it to our plug. But before we do that, I'm going to just put a little dielectric grease here. It's going to help with any moisture buildup that can occur in the plug and just kind of prolong the life of our seven pole. So now we'll tape, take our receptacle here, snap that in place, hear that click, and then we have this lock. Just slide that down, make sure that it's locked in place. We can then feed this in. And then as far as mounting this up, uh, it does not come with hardware, so I'm just going to throw some self-tapping screws in here. Um, you can do a pilot hole if you need to, but self-tappers, as long as you get the one top corner kind of where you want it, the rest of it should be pretty easy. So now I'll just go through and get the rest of my self-tapping screws in place. 
Now we'll head underneath the truck with some zip ties and we'll make our connections and get the rest of our wire put together. Now if you need to, you can lower your spare tire to give you a little bit more space, uh, but you're going to look for your factory 7-way that's kind of by your license plate. Uh, it does have a locking clip here, so you can just pry that back with your fingers, or if you need to, you can use a flathead. And then we're going to just push on this tab here and get this separated. So pretty easy. We have our female and then our male. Um, so ours is just going to kind of jump her into it and make that connections. But before we do that, I want to route this kind of in a clean way. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go up over the hitch, kind of just keep all the wires up. It's going to make it a little bit easier to zip tie up the excess as well. So I'll go ahead and put some dielectric grease on this end as well. And then we'll just snap in our connections. Make sure you push your locking tab in place. Then we'll connect our other connection here. Same thing, snap that in. And then we're just gonna go back with some zip ties and I'll get our excess wire loom tucked up as well as these wires here so it doesn't get in the way of the spare tire. And then we'll go ahead and test it. Now it doesn't come with zip ties, but if you need to pick some up, you can get some of those here at e-trailer. And that's just gonna make sure that these don't dangle down while we're driving. And it's just gonna kind of keep it a little bit more protected. With our connections made, all that's left to do before hitting the road is testing to make sure that it works. Now this is going to work uh, off of your factory 7-way and still maintain that factory 7-way. So testing up here um, is definitely crucial, but also double check your factory 7-way to make sure that's working. Now we're going to run through a light sequence to make sure that it's all working using a test box. You probably don't have one of those at home, so the best option is to hook up to your camper or your trailer, run through the light sequence and check uh, have someone in the back check those lights when you do it and that way you know they're all working properly. So starting off I'm going to go ahead and turn on my running lights. Next I'm going to do my left turn signal, my right turn signal, my brakes, and then if they're all working properly we're good to go. And that was a look at the Pollock 7-way in-bed wiring for gooseneck and fifth wheel trailers on a 2015 Chevy Silverado 3500.